Hi everyone, welcome back to JPWHU TV. It's nice to see you. I hope you're keeping well and you're keeping warm in these very difficult cold times we're going through at the moment. But hopefully it'll be getting warmer by the time you watch this or by the time the game comes around, which we're going to talk about, which is West Ham's 10th home game of the 22-23 Premier League season, where we welcome fellow relegation strugglers Everton to the London Stadium this Saturday afternoon for a three o'clock kickoff, and as such, not live on any UK TV channel. As always, this video is sponsored by the channel sponsor, 3retro.com. Please click the link in the description below that will take you directly through to the West Ham section of their website. But as you can see from the icon, that's up here there's also Everton gear in there as well along with track jackets polo shirts sweatshirts and t-shirts made by Admiral and Umbro so go check those out any purchases you make through the link in the description below the commission that the channel would normally be getting as always I'll be sending on to Iron Supporting Food Banks the charity in the Newham area that are helping those in the Newham area and Essex County and further afield for that matter that are really struggling to make ends meet and put food on their tables so guys go grab yourself a really nice retro shirt or some very nice casual gear and you'll be help saving yourself a few quid for that matter and you'll be helping a very noble charity help less fortunate people than you and I so it's El Clasico ladies and gentlemen and boys and girls and everywhere in between this is a massive, massive game. Now, the referee for this game is Stuart Atwell. His assistants are Darren Can and James Mannering. The fourth official is Dean Whitestone. Yeah, I've never heard of him either. On VAR, unfortunately, we have Andre Mariner, but his assistant is Adam Nunn. So, mm, it's not a bad lineup, bearing in mind, you know, we've all got our issue with Andre Mariner, but he has been a little bit better over, year, over the recent years. But... I really, really hope the, this atmosphere isn't going to be as bad as I think it will be or, or as bad as a lot of people hope it will be. Mostly I know, you know, that mostly I know that a lot of people don't like Lampard Senior, but, sorry, Junior I should say, but, you know, it's just both teams deserve to be in the better positions than we currently are, you know, and it's 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 worrying, worrying times. I'm just going to go into it very, very quickly, um, you know, because I've obviously seen, like everybody else has, the David Moyes um, podcast or interview, depending on which way you want to look at it, um, from the CEO. And yes, I can see why a lot of people are getting rumbled by it. I really, really can. But at the same point, you, you know, because, you know, it's nothing he hasn't really said before, but it's just more bollocks now than we probably was when the time of the recording, which was probably during the World Cup break. Or at some point anyway. So, you know, it's, it's yeah, it's a bit of a, it's a bad timing, but it is what it is. So fair play to David Moyes for not cancelling it to be sent out at the end of the day. He could have, they could have chosen to put that out at some other point or maybe not at all, given the circumstances of the release. Um, but at the same point, yeah, it, it is a good watch, but I can see why people are getting a bit riled up about it. Now let's turn back to the preview, guys. As we remember, especially those that joined the watch along in September, we lost 1-0 up at Goddison Park. Um, Everton are 19th on the table, one more goal conceded than us on 15 points, the same as us after 19 games. We're halfway through the season now, and it is worrying times for both of them. Um, obviously, there was threats to the safety so so from what i'm hearing of of the everton board b before the game they were they, you know during the game they were one up if i remember correctly and they ended up losing it um you know and it's you know there's a lot of there's going to be a lot of bad atmosphere going on there's, there's going to be a lot, a lot of the usual sort of derogatory shock songs I'm, I'm i'm guessing but at the same point guys you know, it's we need to we need to get behind the team and just show that solidarity that seems to be to a degree seems to be missing very recently. Now Everton are three wins, six draws, and ten losses um, so far this season. Of the nine away games Everton have played, they've won one, drawn four, and lost four. They've scored six and they've conceded twelve, and they've picked up just two points from their last five away games. So. This kind of rocks up the stats of Everton, sorry, of Wolves. You know, Wolves only, had only won one of their last five games before we played them. And Everton have not won a game in their last five, especially away from home. Mm. 
Everton's style of play are taking, oh, sorry, are taking long shots and playing down, playing in their own half and allowing opponents to play aggressively against them. They are strong at creating chances using through balls and stealing possession from their opponents, but are weak at keeping possession, finishing scoring chances, stopping opponents from creating chances, defending against long shots and set pieces, as well as aerial duels and avoiding individual errors and are very weak at defending against uh, counter-attacks. Attacks. Now, who does that sound like? That's the reason why we're in the position that we are and Everton are in the position that they are. They do have less strengths than we do. But the strengths that we are supposed to have on paper haven't really been appearing over the last few weeks, have they, guys? Now, Dominic Calvert-Lewin is one of the players who we need to look out for as he has won the highest amount of uh, aerial duels away from home, followed very closely by... James Tarkovsky. We will go into a little bit more detail about that in a second, but their highest goal scorer away from home is Gordon with just two goals, and their highest assister is, yes, it's Alex Iwobi, who's also won two assists. Now, I didn't even know Alex Iwobi was had was still playing, much less being in the Premier League. He's, you know, he's a he's a long time no name, shall we say. Now turning to Everton's injuries at the time of this recording, Keane is out with a long-term Knee injury. Patterson is out until mid-February due to a medial ligament injury. Garner is out until early February with a lower back injury. And Townsend is out until early February due to a knee injury. Now, players to look out for, other than the players I've already mentioned, uh, Cody, Decore, my boy, Damari Gray. We should have bought him long, long time ago. Jordan Pickford it can be very good in goal, but he's not good in goal for Everton in comparison to how he is for England. Holdgate, Onana, uh, Neil Mope. You just, you know, the list is relatively endless. Regardless of their form at the minute, they do have some very, very tricky players, but they just can't score. Again, very similar to us. Now, Lampard Jr.'s go-to formation um, away from home seems to be a 4-3-3. Followed very, very closely by the 3-5-2 and the 3-4-2-1. So, you know, it's just it's difficult to pinpoint on this in exactly how things are going to turn but but at the same point we've now reached the part of the video where we go where we go into more detail for the patreons uh and looking at the players that could be in the starting 11 for Everton and the possible tactics that ever that Lampard could employ if you want to become a patreon links are in the description 2 pound 50 plus VAT a month or 3 pound a month plus VAT you pay more for half a pint in London. You genuinely, genuinely do. But as I said, guys, let's now turn over to the video for the Patreon analysis. All right, guys, so let's talk about West Ham. This is a crunch game for Moyes. Well, as I said earlier, you know, it's a crunch game for both managers. There is going to be a send-off for the, for the late David Gold before the game, and it's a real, real shame that this relegation fodder game is going to overshadow what should be a very emotional and lovely send-off for the lifelong West Ham supporter. It really, really is going to be just... I hope we can show them, the family, the respect that they they deserve in this instance, I know David Gold wasn't a fan of a uh, sorry wasn't a fan for a lot of people, um, but at the end of the day, we've got to show our respects to the bloke. We really, really do. And um, so yeah, I'm hoping you're going to be able to see the the pre the pre match uh, send off the, the, with people. There's going to be there's going to be former players, not just from West Ham, but from um, but from Birmingham as well, if I remember correctly from what I've been reading, um, that were there when the, the, the Golden Sullivan were in charge of that club. So it's going to be very, it's going to, and former managers as well. It'd be very nice to see w what they do. But yeah, it's it's not the for you and I, it's not the biggest and most important thing of the game. But it's a biggie, and as I say, it's a real shame that the relegation conversation is going to really overtake what should be a very very nice um, ceremony. Let's turn to West Ham's um, injuries. Ariola apparently is still out with a hip problem at the start of this, at the time of this recording, but still could be back soon. Um, obviously, won't be back for this game. Still no update on Cornet, unfortunately, and it broke today of the time of this recording, which is one of the reasons why this is going out on Thursday at three o'clock as usual, um, because there's a very, very good chance that we're not going to be able to see Skamaka. That's a very, the, the, you know, the, he's going to, he's due to have another scan on his knee. 
and there's rumblings. I don't say I'm not saying it's going to happen. We'll find out very very soon, I'm sure. But there are rumblings to say that this um, he may be out for a few weeks. So, and this is one of the reasons why I've said to the patrons that I think this is one game too far for West Ham. I really really do. It basically means that we've got Antonio leading the line quite frankly there's no other way of putting it genuinely leading the line now he's got to buck himself up he really really has we know he had a renaissance a couple of seasons ago he, so he is capable of sort of putting it out of the hat can he do it again i genuinely genuinely hope he will i really really hope he will um i literally had all the animation ready to go with skamaka up front in the starting 11 um hopeful prediction but now I've obviously had to change it. I've made I've made a few changes here and there on top of that as well in comparison to the preview for the Wolves game. Um, you know, obviously I, I can't see Dawson starting in any shape or form. I really, really can't. Um, there's information to say that he is actually up north with his family this week and probably will be for the next week or so um, until the transfer window closes. Wolves are trying to knock the door down to get him and I totally understand the reason why yes we don't you don't want to sell to a relegation rival but they shouldn't be they shouldn't be a relegation rival we shouldn't be a relegation rival to them and Everton shouldn't be a relegation rival to us but this is the best starting 11 I think we can possibly put out as always guys put your comments in the comment section below let me know the starting 11 that you were hoping Moyes is going to put out not that you think he's going to put out but what you're hoping he's going to put out and this is what I'm hoping we're going to see Fabianski in goal with a back three of Kera, Zuma and Agued. Soufal and Emerson as the wing backs with Rice, Paqueta and Ben Rama in midfield with Fornells supporting Antonio up front. Okay, guys, so thank you very, very much for staying the course and watching. Um, as always, as I say, put your comments in the comment section below. Let me know what you're thinking. I'm really intrigued to see what your thoughts are. Um, there will obviously be doing the post-match uh, full-time thoughts video so keep an eye out for that but in the meantime guys look after yourselves take care and i'll see you very very soon all the best now